Hi, what's up, y'all? It's Poppin' with Pregnant. It's Dee about to react to this vid by Pearl Found. This title, Rappers Who Exposed Diddy Years Ago. Okay, so he's debunking what a lot of people are saying, which is, oh, why these rappers and Ben didn't put Diddy on blast? They were just all silent. Apparently not all of them. So let's see who was speaking up. Let's watch. With Diddy locked up and denied bail twice under charges that include phrases like free goss and a thousand bottles of baby oil, it's crazy to see a figure so powerful in the history of hip hop for the past few decades. The label CEO who has relationships and stories with everyone finally got taken down by the feds. And with that, it seems like we're going to be hearing a lot more of those stories about everyone in the rap industry very soon. But rap is a genre full of artists who speak their mind, who aren't afraid to call each other out. And despite Diddy's power and influence, plenty of artists associated with him have been making these accusations for years. Nas famously took these shots at Diddy in his Jay Z does either. No, and Pac had been going at Diddy for years, which could be traced back to Shug Knight's issues with that cool. boy and Pac's beef with Biggie. Pac oh, went after Diddy with lines like, and lines like, and let's not forget this one. Pac even depicted Diddy as a crossdresser on the back cover of his Machiavelli album. Rappers who've been able to distance themselves from like, uh, the industry like this have been giving us hints for years. Okay, well, Big Diddy's supposed to be releasing a gospel album. What, what came to your mind when you, when you, when you, when you heard that? What, what, what thoughts did you like, have? That Y'all want me to answer that? I mean, yeah. I mean, this I mean, fun. can RuPaul put out a gospel album? But why has nobody come out and called Puff out? Where's the correlation? the whole industry keep it kind of secret? And when they did talk about something, laugh about it. <laughs> you said, I like when you do it like that, Daddy. <laughs> when you're scrambling and scraping for shit. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> did he got to the level of power that he did because he had a role to play in the industry? Essentially being the Epstein of music. Gatekeeping opportunities in exchange for secretly recording artists and other powerful figures at his parties. The actual deeper truth of what's oh, going on uh, is just control mechanisms it's not just they go into these parties and they get drugged and drunk and then they do something with like an underage person in a room and get filmed it looks like what's happening is actually just an agreement what are you willing to do to get everything you'd ever want speaking of underage people uh suge knight is currently getting an interview from jail which is so ghetto <laughs> But they're interviewing him from jail, and he's saying that there was someone who was employed by a record label, and their whole job was to find underage girls for the artists to have sex with. Like, how fucking sick is that? That's your job, and that the label is, is a part of that, and they're okay in that? What? Right. And if the answer to that is, I'm willing to kill someone, they're like, okay, we're going to film it, you're going to kill someone, and then we own you because we can always release that. And then you're in the club, right? And the worse that you're willing to do, the more they own you, and therefore the more they can trust you. The government is now in possession of the tapes that could bring down everybody, which is probably why we're seeing all these resignations in the music industry. But plenty of artists who have been able to distance themselves from the industry over time have called Diddy out, initially for the mistreatment of his artists. And the news that's coming to light might be the reason why he was able to get away with these practices for so many years. The Locks had been exposing Diddy as early as the early 2000s. On Hot 97, the Locks straight up demanded to be freed from their bad boy contracts, saying they felt that's trapped by Diddy's though. manipulative business deals. Don't, don't sit here and portray like Puck Puck from what is it? What is it? What do you call? It's what do you call? What do you call? We made one record with you. Money, power, respect. It's ten years later, and you still got half of our publishing. They even threatened to get physical if they weren't released. Probably after the argument with Diddy. When Diddy when Styles threw the chair at Puff. This was one of the first major calls for accountability that painted Diddy as a shady businessman. And then you have Sean, who took the fall in the infamous nightclub shooting that sent him to prison for a decade while Diddy got off clean. Sean came out and repeatedly accused Diddy of betrayal and cowardice. Nothing ain't forgotten about this creep. What he did to Mason, he did to Lex. God bless the dead, notorious cop. Even Freddie P, a member of the band from the Making the Band era, recently came out with an emotional post on Instagram, accusing Diddy of destroying his career and driving him into depression. He called Diddy a manipulator who ruined his shot at success. And when you look back, you can see that Carl Thomas and Black Rob all had similar stories. Black Rob in particular passed away in poverty in 2021, and many blamed Diddy oh. for not stepping in to help him after he'd made millions for him as an artist. Loon, who also left the industry, accused Diddy oh, of offering terrible deals and being more focused on money. These artists were speaking up, but no one really listened at the time. But they were all telling us the same thing. Now let's go deeper into 
cents and 50 cents beef with Diddy. Their issues trace all the way back to the early 2000s, when 50 claimed that Diddy was trying to blackball him from the industry. According to 50, Diddy tried to shut down his rise to success by telling industry executives not to work with him. Years later, the beef reignited when 50 brought up a bizarre encounter where Diddy allegedly offered to take him shopping. I looked at him like, what the f- what the- what you just say? <laughs> Let me move, man, before I do something. You're gonna make me mess up the way. In response, Diddy tried to downplay the beef, but 50 never let it go. 50 continued to troll Diddy on social media, calling him fruity and constantly referring to rumors about Diddy's wild part. 50 was even hinting that Diddy might have had a role in Biggie's death. Who's after these balls? We don't get them, they gon' kill us all. Man, plus we don't get that nigga, man, that nigga so. Fast forward to this year, and Eminem added fuel to the fire with his track Fuel oh, with Jay. Yeah, yeah. He didn't just spell the word rapper and leave out a beat. Now looking back, we can see how Eminem was calling him out for what he's on trial for now. But in the lines that follow, he also kind of implies that Diddy had a hand in the deaths of both Biggie and Tupac. Rest in peace, Biggie, and Pop, Eminem's alluding to his possible involvement in orchestrating these killings even decades later. Now back to how Diddy's been getting away with all of this. Ye and Puff's exchanges from 2022 might be important to look back at to understand it. The first moment to look at is this clip from Ye on Drink Champs in 2022. Anyway, and the reason why you got chunks because you did a deal, you fucking fed. You know what I'm saying? That's why you gotta come at me. Diddy actually responded to this interview over text, and Ye responded with this. Then he said this on Big Boy's podcast. Diddy, all these people Wait, are in good form. Like this. Fuck you, you bad. <laughs> then he said this on Big Boy's podcast. Diddy, all these people are in a position that for us as celebrities, they got to call and put a leash on. When we're talking about the validity of Lil Rod's lawsuit, he alleges in the lawsuit that Diddy has protection from the feds. At least over the past he did. And he alleges mm -hmm. that they covered up this murder, a couple murders in the past. We, we know about the Shine murder. There's a lot of um, rumors and allegations in the industry about how Shine took the rap. And so there's just like, there's evidence of the feds protecting him for a lot of his career. So what exactly did Diddy do to bite the hand that feeds him and go down this year when this has been going on for decades? My theory is Cat Williams knew about it in January because that's when Diddy pissed the wrong people off. Soon Diageo for racial discrimination, <laughs> claiming that they weren't supporting the liquor brands he had stake in as much as their other ones. So there was no plan for us to be successful it was no equal treatment. What does this the other brands, plan got to do with the family? They had agave planted. They had no agave planted for me. And sometimes you have to go check even your partners to see what's really going on. And so when I saw that, I was like, nah, nah, I'm going to fight because it's bigger than me. It's, 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 it's about not just me, it's about we, it's about all of us. I chose my purpose over profit. And that's the whole Deleon situation. When uh, you see him go to daily on is when you see him have some issues it gets bad you know and these people have really strong yeah, relationships don't think that the civil case doesn't turn into a criminal case mm. faster because he's making that them uncomfortable now i don't think kendrick mm -hmm. predicted the arrest but i don't doubt that he knew it was coming did he himself move to new york to cooperate with authorities and in the days leading up to the arrest around when kendrick dropped his untitled track on instagram did he was showing up in public around new york from central park to harlem if did he goes down and his affiliates and enablers go down with him then kendrick's prediction on the song that the party was about to die that the industry was about to reset would be spot on and we're seeing that That's with all crazy. these resignations and labels dropping their artists did is also on watch for deleting himself so there's also a good chance things go down the same way they did with Epstein. He's silenced before he gets the chance to bring everyone down with him. If that happens, will things just continue as normal with the government in possession of all the career ending blackmail that Diddy once held? Will anything really get better by just getting rid of Diddy? Probably not. We'll just have to wait and see. There's always an evil man lurking in the background, okay? These corporations, these people in power do very evil things. And yeah, we thought, oh, Diddy had all this power people who have even more power than him you know so yeah it, it's crazy how things are unfolding i think people are really fascinated by this because he was such a prominent figure in the hip-hop community for so long um so to see him go down it's like oh anybody can go down because he was the top of the top in the rap community so it's like wait <laughs> other people are, are about to go down as well anyway y'all let me know what y'all think though let me know what other videos you're gonna watch and i'll see y'all in the next one bye